Mirë Mrama, të dashtu një demi sënë të është nata e fundit që përshimi për këtë sezon. Na do të shimi prapë në shtator në basë përshimeve. Me që është emisioni i fundit për këtë sezon, komendu që është mirë me pas një misafir special. Sënë të mundeni me ndëgju intervistën me një antimafjoz, me një antimafjoz të ndërtimit, me një antimafjoz të mafis politike. Me një person që është marë me konfiskimin e pasuris së mafis, jena të folë për dikend që i ka shti brinat me mafin matë famshme bot me Koza Nostra, pra me mafin siciliane. Në këtë intervist që kemi më zhvillu ma vonë, ishtë kryetari i qytetit Palermos në Itali, Leo Luka Orlando, i cili për hertë parë është bo kryetar në vitin 1986 dhe me disa pazuza ka shërbys si i til deri në vitin 2022 është ikona antimafi e sicilis. Leo Luka Orlando është profesori të drejtës kushtetusë në Itali. Në vitin 1986, a ju bo kryetari Palermos, kryet qytetit të Sicilis. Kjo ndodhi, në base duke shërby si këshiltari guvernatori të Sicilis, Pier Santi Matarella, i cili ishtë vlau i presidentit aktualt Itali, Sergio Matarella, u vra në një atentat të mafis. Palermo dhe Sicilia ishin në teror në atko. Kërkush, me vite të tona, s'ka gudzu me umar me mafin atje, e cila kontrollon të gjithë shka në bitë të gjitha ndërtimin. Pak në gjajshën me metodat të përdoru në Atena, vetë se Atena, për shka kësë është 30 vjetë ma vonë, mafia është shumë ma e butë. Rëfimi i këti burri fantastik është rëndqetës, është si me pa film. Si hakmarje për vrasin e shoku dhe bashkëpuntorit të ti, me të bu kryetari Palermos, mësafiri i jonë përsonte, rëfen se si shte përgadit e zhvillu procesi ma i malë gjytësor kunder mafis në Itali, i një urë si maksi procesi, ku janë dënu gjithsej 338 veta me gjithsej 2685 vjetë burkë. Në këtë proces janë vra edhe prokurore gjukatës të cilët sot janë herojnë të Italisë. Kjo një e si pranvera siciliane. Prej të të gjashtës dhe tutje, Leo Luka Orlando ka përgadit reformat të ndryshme prej ligjore si konfiskimi i pasunis e deri të këputja e kontratave për biznis të mafis, deri në dopsimin e malë të mafis e cila, si pas vetë Orlandës, vepranë edhe sëtë në krye qytetit kryesore evropiane. Por aje ka një filozofi, shdukja e mafis në doshta nuk është e mundshme, por udheqja e institucioneve prej saj zduhet kurse si me uleju. Leo Luka Orlando është sonte në një intervist ekskluzive që ka dhonë për këtë vënd dhe emisionin tem këtu në studio. A ishte mjusafiri manifestas në Prishtin në sisin e kryetarit Palermos të vitit 2018, kur manifesta ishte mbajt atje. Une pa të anderin, me zhvillu këtë biset të cilën juftaj me e po. Mr. Lando, thank you for accepting to have this talk with me tonight. Thanks for your invitation, for giving me the opportunity just to to speak about uh, my experience, but first of all, my impression about Pristina and about Kosovo. You're such an inspiring figure. When I read your history, it's like reading a novel. Uh, but uh, what brought you here in the hottest days of summer in Pristina? Uh, I was really impressed to come here in Pristina. Because before, I didn't never been in Kosovo, and the, I had no special, specific information about Kosovo. Of course, I know the story, I know what happened in the past, I know about the contrast with the Serbia, but uh, I had no idea about uh, people uh, living in, in Kosovo and the people uh, in Kosovo. And I was impressed because I discovered a very young country. I discovered a country with a, a tremendous potential of future. I just the sensation to be in a country that has a, a tremendous potential of future. And uh, I was impressed because the chief of state, no Kosovo. The prime minister all over the world, no Kosovo. But the citizens do not know Kosovo. So I think that what uh, I suggest to do is to invite no longer the prime ministers, but to invite the tourists, to invite the normal people, just to let the world know and appreciate your country. Because uh, you have played, you play an important role in the harmony 
between the different states all over the world, west, east. But uh, I think that uh, what I wish, what I hope, is that uh, you will be invaded by tourists. <laughs> it happened so, even in uh, Palermo. In Palermo, we were completely off limits. Palermo was the mafia. Palermo was the capital of the mafia. And when I started my experience, uh, it was not enough to say that we had the mafia in Palermo. No, no. We had not the mafia in Palermo. The mafia governed the Palermo. The mafia had the face of the mayor. The mafia had the face of, pri of ministers. The mafia had the face of priests, of bishops. The mafia had the face uh, of the state. And uh, who started to fight the mafia? I started to fight the mafia when I was 14 years old, 14. And in the school, in Jesuit college, I was considered crazy. Uh, why Lucchetto speaks about the, the, against the mafia? We, we have nothing to do with the mafia, therefore, we're not to speak about the mafia. The mafia used the 100, 200, 300 persons just using weapons but needed millions and millions of normal persons, nice persons, not watching, not speaking, not hearing, because mafia needs the silence and the dark. And uh, I broke the silence. I broke the dark, and I was considered the atheist and communist. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I've never been atheist, I'm sorry, but... Uh, Nobody is perfect, and I've been communist. I'm sorry, I've never been communist. <laughs> but being against the mafia, the priest, the Catholic priest, who are mafiosi, said that I was an atheist. Mm. And being against the mafia, the minister, mafiosi, said that I was opposition and communist. So you can understand that at that time, I was not tourist in Palermo. In the Palermo airport landed the dollars and the drug of the mafia. Some interview uh, to organize uh, some journalists to organize some interview about the mafia, nothing else. Now we won. Mafia still exists, not only in Pristina, even in Palermo. Not only in New York, even in Palermo. Not only in Paris, even in Palermo. Not only in London, even in Palermo. Not only in New York, even in Palermo. But mafia does not govern the city. And the airport is named the Falcone and Borsellino from the names of the two brave judges killed in 1992 by the Mafia, and uh, millions and millions of passengers land in Palermo Airport, Falcone and Borsellino Airport, and uh, people understood that not to be governed by the Mafia is convenient. Yes, convenient, not only moral, not only legal, even convenient. So I hope that you, even you, will discover how convenient it is to welcome everybody. <laughs> to welcome everybody. <laughs> yeah, we will, we will. Uh, Mr. Orlando, I tried to explain to the public your history, but it's such a great history that cannot be explained in three minutes, two minutes that I tried earlier. So I would like to, to make you some, some questions. How did you start all this? In 1976, you became advisor to uh, Pier Santi Mattarella, he is the brother of the actual president of Italy, right? Sergio Mattarella, uh, who later became pre president of Sicilian region. And you were his advisor. And after two years, he got killed by mafia. Can you tell us how, how did this happen and why? I was a young professor of public law. I was the youngest professor of public law in Italy, in university. And there was the legal advisor of Piazzanti Mattarella. I knew Pier Santi since many years because he was uh, assistant of my father in the university. Mm. He was a young lawyer in the office of my father. So I knew him since many years. And he appointed me as a legal advisor. He said, I am obliged to appoint you because you are the only professor for regional law in Sicily. So I, it is not a, a, a free decision why. It's not because I, I, I know you, I, I'm your friend, but because you are the only one expert in Sicily. And there was the legal advisor of him. 
for the two years she was governor of Sicily, was president of the Sicilian region. And my life changed. The sixth of January, 1980. My life changed when uh, mafiosian politicians killed uh, Piazzanti Mattarella. Because Piazzanti was a fantastic political leader. He was a man having a vision of the future. And he was a politician considering the politics a service to the people. And uh, in front of the body of the killer, the president of the Sicilian region, Piazzanti Mattarella, there was the brother, Sergio. There was the widow, Irma. There were the friends. I was there. And everybody told me, you cannot accept that Piazzanti will die a second time. You are young, you are 30 years old, you are a young professor of public law. You have never met the politicians who killed the Piersanti. And you are pretty crazy. And I was, probably I am, pretty <laughs> crazy because I occupied the faculty of law where my father was the dean. Oh, wow. Then I went to Germany, occupied the faculty of law, but the dean was not my father. So <laughs> at least peace in family, peace in family. I could not say no. And the Sergio, the brother, was candidate in city council together with me to vote for me as mayor in city council of Palermo. And I dedicated all my life just to let Palermo no longer to go be governed by the mafia. And when the 31st of January 2015, Sergio Mattarella, Professor Sergio Mattarella, my colleague in the university, he teaching parliamentary law, me teaching constitutional law, was elected for the first time president of the Republic. I called and say, Sergio, mission accomplished. You are president of the Republic and the mayor of Palermo and politicians who killed your brother do not govern any longer the city of Palermo. Mission accomplished. If I die tonight, I die happy. Mission accomplished. Not completed, but accomplished. Accomplished. Because uh, I dedicate all my life just to let Palermo no longer be governed by the mafia. And, uh, but every two times, after two times, I have to stop. Because uh, for our legislation, you cannot be candidate for the third terms consecutive. So in the, in the middle term time, I've been member of Italian parliament, of European parliament, but always thinking I had to come back to Palermo, I had to go back to Palermo. And now, just uh, in the last month of June, I finished my experience. And now I could not candidate for the third time consecutive. And now I try to do what I do after two terms, to try to clarify to myself the meaning of the experience of the city. And the, if I may, I wish to tell you, I wish to tell you just, just watching TV, and I thank for the attention, I wish to tell you we live in Palermo what I call a process of peace. Process of peace. We started with the war, the war of the weapons of the mafia, the war of the state with the law, the war of the state just with Aula Bunker. My first building, 1985, was to build Aula Bunker, just the place for the maxi trial against more than 400 mafia bosses. So bunker means war. And it was a war. The mafia used the weapons. The state used the law. It was a law, a war. And this war destroyed so many persons. Atheist and communist. Atheist and communist. Yes. <laughs> Just in solitude, uh, fight against the mafia. The Cardinal of Palermo, Archbishop of Palermo, he was against the mafia, 
was completely isolated by the other bishop, completely isolated by the priest. And they appeared just like a, a crazy, the same, the prosecutors. They were isolated inside their office because many of the other prosecutors closed their eyes, mouth, ear, protecting the system of power because the mafia is not a crime. Don't forget. The mafia is not a crime. It's a system of power. It's a system of power. It's a system of cultural power, a system of economic power, a system of political power, a system of religious power, uh, I forgot, a system of criminal power, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, and they, the normal criminals, the normal criminals are against the state and outside the state, against the banks and outside the banks, against the church and outside the church, against civil society and outside civil society. The normal, sorry for normal, uh, normal, the normal criminals are against and outside the mafiosi, not only the Sicilian mafiosi, even uh, Nazis are mafiosi. Even uh, the terrorists are mafiosi. Because they are not only against, they try to be inside the state. They try to be inside the church. They try to be inside the banks. They try to be inside civil society. If I tell a story, a normal criminal needing the money of the bank as to cover the head, as to use the weapon, as to come inside the bank, the bank and the violence say, give me the money, using the weapon. It is a normal criminal. A mafioso, oh, he has only to press the button, director open the door and gives the money. <laughs> so you understand the difference? Yes, I understand the difference. To be against and outside, normal criminal, to be against and inside it means mafioso. And it was just uh, necessity to was necessary to let the mafia go outside, outside, outside. And uh, I think that uh, people understood that it, it was uh, convenient, but it was a long way. It was a long way. And the whip passed after 1992, the mafia killed too much. And killing too much was a boomerang. And people in 1992, after the killing of Falcone and Borsellino, after the killing of Bodyguards, after the killing of Francesca Morvillo, the women, the children, they open the eyes, the mouth, the ear, and they say, basta, enough is enough. We don't want any longer to live under the government of the mafia. And there was an explosion of civil courage. And the day passed, the we passed from the law to the rights. For many, many years, we are for the law. The law, the prison, prosecutors, and there was a justicialist, the law. After 1992, when I was no longer isolated, when the people say no, when the women, the children, the students, the older persons say no, just organizing on the street, human chain, just protesting, we discovered the importance not of the law, but of the rights. In many cases, the law is against the rights. We discovered the importance of the right to have truth, truth, the right to have justice, the right to live. I gave at that time in the 90 years after 1992, I gave the honor and citizenship of Palermo to persons condemned to death. <clears throat> it means criminal. Send the message that no one can kill, neither the state. And they, we gave honor and citizenship of Palermo to many criminals condemned to death, including a, a guy condemned to death in Virginia, United States of America, Richmond. And this guy, when he received the honor citizenship of Palermo, he called me. He said, Mr. Mayo, thanks, thanks, thanks. I, I did not know what was Palermo, where was Palermo. I am a person living in the periphery of society. 
I am a criminal. But believe me, I have never killed the women they say that I killed. And I said, Joseph, it's not my problem. We are right to live. Even if you have killed, you stay in prison, but to live. And this guy was executed. And before di dying, he asked me, as the last wish of a, a person condemned to death, to be buried in Palermo. It is buried in Palermo. Palermo is the only city in the world where is buried a condemned to death in Virginia, United States of America, to send a message that we are for the life and the mafia is for the death. We organize in Palermo the largest gay pride in South Europe. The right to be different, the right to diversity, and we welcome everybody. I gave to you a copy of Charter of Palermo. Yes. Thank you very much. If you ask to me how many migrants are in Palermo, I don't reply 80,000, 90,000. I reply no one. Police in Palermo is Palermo. The mayor makes no distinction between who was born in Palermo and who does live in Palermo. Because uh, we are racist. Yes, I'm racist. I defend the only existing race, human race. We make distinction between the races, preparers, intolerance, the cow, and the Auschwitz. We have one race, the human race. So when you will come in Palermo, I'm sorry for you. You will be condemned to be Palermitan. <laughs> of course, you can leave Palermo when you wish. But until when you stay, you are Palermitan. We have one race, seven billions of identities. Believe me. Identity does not come from the blood of the parents. I'm not Palermitan because my father and my mother were Palermitans. I am who I am because I decide to be who I am. I am not the identity of my father. My daughter is not the identity of me. I'm not the identity of my brother. People, migrant, send to us a message that it's possible to be Bengalis and Sicilian. And at the end of this speech, probably I will decide to be Tunisian and Jewish. No, no, sorry, sorry. German and Hindu. <laughs> Each human being is a different cocktail. Two human beings equal the same do not exist. So you can understand what does mean when we speak about one race, seven billions of identity, and only one God, only one God. I believe in God, but please, don't ask me the name of God. So when I am in Animal Moshe, I pray for Allah. <laughs> when I am in a synagogue, I pray for Yahweh. When I am in, a, I meet the Dalai Lama, the Dalai Lama is a already citizen of Palermo, when I, I meet, not only condemned to death, even Dalai Lama is already citizen of Palermo. <laughs> yeah. When I meet Dalai Lama, I say that I love Buddha. When I am in Hindu temples, I pray for Shiva. When I have time, I pray for Jesus Christ, of course. Because if God is one, is one. It's not an insurance contract for my second life. I don't do that to be able to say one day, Allah, even for you I prayed. Jesus Christ, even for you I prayed. No, no. It is to avoid that God is used to divide the people. I cannot accept that God gives the fundament to divide the people. It's a wrong God if said that I have to be against you in the name of God. I can be against you for other reasons. Uh, because uh, I'm not sympathetic, you are a, I am a liar, I am not honest, what do you want? But not the name of God, please. Not the name of God. So you can understand what I mean when I speak about the process of peace. May I tell you that probably this process of peace can be interesting in Colombia, can be interesting in Tijuana, Mexico, probably can be useful in Ukraine when the war will finish. This uh, absolute war will finish. Probably can be useful uh, in the relations between 
Pristina and Belgrado. So I think that it's possible to pass from the war to the peace. And it's possible to pass from the war to the peace, not only restoring the buildings, but restoring the spirit of a people, just changing their mind. So what I think that the, our experience in Palermo can be useful uh, probably even in Pristina, can be useful probably even in Tijuana, can be useful even in Kiev, uh, because uh, we have a traditional Sicilian expression that I will never accept. I say in Sicilian, then I have to translate into Italian, then into English. Kunasce tunno un po' morire quadrato. Chi nasce rotondo non può morire quadrato. Who is a, who was born round cannot die square. Wrong. Who was born round can even die square. But then experience demonstrate to change is possible. To change is possible in a positive way, but it's possible even in a negative way. So I think that uh, it's very important, uh, this is my presence in uh, Pristina, because I discovered the importance of manifesta in Pristina. Manifesta. An exhibition of art. How can that be so important? An exhibition of contemporary art. <laughs> What has to do with the, the, the daily life of the people? Uh, but it was fantastic when the manifesto arrived in Palermo in 2018. Arrived in the, in the city where there was the division of human rights. Division that they were to, to let the, the wall fall down. No borders. And it was important for the regeneration of the city. Because uh, the exposition of piece of art was not inside the museum, was on the street. And letting the people discover that it's possible to leave the art not being necessarily an expert or a collectionist. And it just the same is happening here in Pristina. I was impressed by the fantastic opening ceremony that there was just a, a Friday night. <sighs> thousand, thousand young people. I don't speak about the authorities. I don't care about them. So I respect, <laughs> of course. I have never seen so high level parterre. The president of the Republic of Kosovo, the president of Albania, the prime minister, the, all the ministers, I mean, say, all the ambassadors. But uh, may I tell you what I, what has surprised the most to see so many young people, so many young people that are the future of Pristina, the future of Kosovo. Because as I, I told, Kosovo is a very well known among the chief of state, but it to be known by the citizens of the world. So I hope that the airport of Pristina will land not only chief of state, but even <laughs> tourists, normal tourists, normal tourists. Definitely. Coming and enjoying the beauty of your city. And the, we inaugurated the, the green uh, corridor. Yes. A very simple. It was just railway, abundant, no sense. It has, has become just a message. It is not a public space. May I, I told to the mayor of Pristina, I really appreciate the mayor of Pristina. I wish to say thanks for his uh, enthusiasm. And uh, he's an example of diaspora, I think. He's an example of, yes, he is. Yes. An architect. Just, and uh, I was impressed by, by him. And I, I, I just told it to, to, to the mayor that uh, it's very important because uh, this green corridor sent the message that it's possible to change the mind. But please, I said, don't speak about public space. It's not a public space, it's something more. It's a common good. A common good is better than public. 
We speak normally about public and private, just the contrast between public and private. But what we need is not to have private properties, public properties. We need to have common goods. So an opera house, public or private, has to be a common goods. A, a pedestrian area, public or private, has to be common goods. A green corridor, public or private, has to be a common goods. And we discovered the importance of common goods that overpasses the difference, the traditional difference between public and private with the goods confiscated to the mafia. You know, the mayor of Palermo is the richest mayor in the world. How come? The property is confiscated to the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the richest. It's the richest. No. So before the mayor, it was the mafia who was exactly. the richest. Exactly. Before the mayor, before the legislation that gives to the state the, the power to confiscate to the mayor, you know what that mean? I gave the apartment of a former mayor to confiscate to the former mayor to the homeless people in Palermo. Ah, you know what does it mean? A symbolic meaning. Now I understand why they call you crazy. We, we, gave, we gave the villa where was fugitive Totorina, hmm. the boss of the bosses, where he was fugitive for too many years. I gave this villa to Carabinieri. There's a station of police. And in the bedroom of Mafia Boss is the office of commandant of the station, of Carabinieri. So you can understand this cultural change. And we discovered that the confiscated good is a common good because it's uh, public, but it's used for social purpose. A school is common goods. A, a arena is common goods. So I think that what we need is just to overpass the idea of the public and private, because even a, a private museum can be a common goods, if the owner, of course. Uh, you are private television. Yes. Yes, you are private. Matter that you are a common goods or not. You are a common goods. Yes. A common goods. It has not dependent properties. Because you send the message that your presence is important for the daily life of the people. When the people will not understand, will not understand that you are useful for the daily life, you will be condemned to be a private, a private uh, enterprise. I hope that you will be a common goods. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you, uh, you follow to be a common goods. I am not like a like how to say, the, this mainstream journalist, I was an activist. I started my public life in 2011 when I threw red paint on the rector of university because of corruption. Uh, similar to you. <laughs> so, yeah, and I... Because for you, university was public or private? I don't know, was, was common goods. Was common goods. Was yes. common goods. It should have been the same if it should be a private university. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, a school. Can be public or private? I meant for the public school, of course, but it's not a problem. Same. It's not, it's not no, the we problem. are on the same page. But, but, <laughs> but, you are a private school, you, you must consider yourself a common goods. Definitely. You cannot ex expropriate the education. You cannot expropriate the space for the life of the people. You cannot expropriate the heart. You cannot expropriate the music. If you are really an artist, you have to, to let the people imagine that your piece of art is a common good. A manifesto is playing this role, just giving a contribution for what I call regenerative marketing. Mm. You know the marketing. The traditional marketing is, I want to sell orange uh, juice. To sell orange juice, I speak about the 
But I meet on country, how many beauties are in the country. Then I sell the orange juice. It is traditional marketing. But was I am experimenting, together with Professor Cota, with the other persons, is the so-called regenerative marketing. I not only show the beauty of Pristina to sell orange juice, but I promote the change of Pristina to sell orange juice. So you understand it's different. Yes. Because in, in the second case, the role is not only to show the beauty, but even to promote the new beauty, a new sensibility. And Manifesta does that. As let Palermitan discover that we were rich. In many cases, the community has not the sense of the richness. Uh, we say we need to estimate us. Out estimate us. I speak about, of course, uh, about uh, how advices. So you can imagine if they even are yours or not. But uh, are how? In Palermo, in the past, the people say, Professor or uh, Mayor. Uh, Mayo, a friend came from France and told me that Palermo is really beauty. My dear, did you need a friend coming from France to discover that Palermo is beauty? <laughs> because the people in Palermo believe to the statement of people not being Palermitan. Yes. So we have to have what do we, I call out estimate us. I wish to say that Palermo is fantastic Bef before you say, coming from Kosovo, that we are fantastic. And I to say that Palermo is mafiosa before you come from Kosovo and say that we are mafiosi. So, we have, first of all, to know ourselves. Manifest eh, can be useful to let people in Pristina no better the people in Pristina, <laughs> no better themselves. Very interesting. You mentioned earlier the confiscation. We are just in that uh, period of time right now in our country. In our uh, parliament, there is this law that is going to be passed uh, so that we will have a bureau that will deal with confiscation of the exactly. illegal properties that exactly. are collected by politicians. Because in our, in our case, mafia and politicians are like the same thing. I know that it was the case in Palermo, but here you don't have like uh, groups that are outside at all. They were only in institutions and not in other uh, spheres of life. <laughs> so now we have a lot of discussions and there is this Venice Commission that gave some objections regarding the constitution and so on. The right. I'm also the professor of constitutional law. So I would like to know what was your experience in addressing all these concerns about human rights now for those who have been, who have been stealing this country for years and became so rich and now when it comes to the confiscation of their illegal properties, they say, oh, it's about human rights now. So the, how, did, how did you fix that? Uh, may I speak about the war and peace? Yes, please. <laughs> allora, when mafiosi and politicians just they get money, just illegally money, may I tell you that they are attacking just like a war? Or to defend us? There's only one way to defend us. Just to use the weapons. In this case, it's the weapons of the law. Just like in Palermo, when we use the, the weapon of the, of, the, of the law. And we have a special law, very important, that is called the La Torre, from the name of politician who proposed, and he was killed for that, was killed. Because this guy, this politician, understood that a mafia boss with properties 
in the prison, by the boss in prison. Preserving properties is much more dangerous than a mafia boss free without properties. A mafia boss free in the street without properties is not dangerous. A mafia boss in prison preserving properties is really dangerous. Of course, the best is in prison without properties. <laughs> of course. So, we had this law, and the, I'm proud because I presented, I was a member of the European Parliament at the end of 90 years. As a member of the European Parliament, I presented an action plan just saying to the European Union that it is necessary to confiscate illegal properties. It's very important. Because Why is it important? It's important because uh, The mafia is a system of power, economic power. You have just to break relations with the economy. It's a system of economic power or to confiscate the properties. It's a system of religious power or to isolate them from the church. It's a system of educational power or to isolate them from the university, from the schools. Because I repeat, it's a system of power. Uh, therefore, we need the special, special legislation. I know, I know it's a, a legislation of war, but it's the only way. Otherwise, uh, the same persons who agree about the Ukrainians, defending them from the dictator Putin, are the same who say that we are not to confiscate properties to the mafiosi? No, no, please. For the same reason for which the Ukrainians have the right to defend themselves, the, the citizens have the right to confiscate the properties of the corrupted. I know it's a special legislation, but uh, do you think that it's possible to promote the future of Kosovo if Kosovo should govern the if the mafia should govern Kosovo? <laughs> I don't believe. I don't speak about Kosovo. I speak about my experience. We know that. And when I speak about my experience, I say normally that we have, I have, no we. I have a tremendous experience. I have a really tremendous experience. George Bernard Shaw, the famous writer, said that experience is the name we give to our mistakes. So I have a tremendous experience because I did a lot of mistakes. May I hope that the Hada will not do my mistakes? My contribution is to say that we were weak since we have confiscated the properties of the mafiosi. We were weak since the church protected the mafiosi. We were weak since the politicians was a proud to be voted by mafiosi. So, to change is possible. Uh, I, we change it. Uh, we hope to go ahead on the same way, because otherwise the future of Palermo should, will be not convenient. Not illegal, not immoral, not convenient. Not convenient. Professor, you mentioned earlier in the beginning of the talk that there is still mafia in Palermo. Of course. When we from Kosovo think of European Union countries, it is unimaginable for us that there is mafia in a European country. How is that possible? How is that so? Mafia in, in European... Mafia in Palermo. But may I speak three hours about the mafia in Germany? May I speak three hours about the mafia in, in uh, Baleari? May I speak three hours about mafia in uh, Cot... Uh, Costa Azzurra, may I speak three hours about the mafia in London? Does this mean that we are hopeless in Kosovo? Exist, but that's, the problem is not to let the mafia govern. So in Palermo we have criminal groups, but they are criminals. They do not govern. In the past, they governed the Palermo. There is no city in Europe so culturally changed like Palermo in the last 40 years. I know, Berlin changed it, Mosca changed it, 
but bearing the Mosca changes in connection with the international changes. The end of Soviet Union, the unification of the Germany, the fall of the Berlin Wall. We in Palermo changed without changing the constitution. We changed it in the mind, in the art, in the style of life. So, if we want to be free from the mafia, sorry, from the mafias, because I told you that in my opinion, Nazism was mafia. Adolf Hitler perverted the values of German, of, 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 the, of, of the German people. The German people, they respect authority, and Adolf Hitler, in name of authority, let the German obey to the legal law. May I say the same about uh, the terrorism in name of Koran? Who is the first enemy of German culture? Adolf Hitler, who said that he preserved the pureness of the German identity. Who is the first enemy of Islamic culture? Osama bin Laden. He said the defense, the Islamic culture is the first enemy. Who is the first enemy of Christian culture? The Pope organizing crusade. Who is the first enemy of Sicilian uh, people? A mafia boss. The mafia boss says, oh, I am the real Sicilian. Sicilian is not a dialect, it's a language. Uh, uh, we, we have very important values like family, like honor, like friendship, uh, like religious faith. And name of these values, they kill. Transforming the friendship in criminal alliance, the, the family into a criminal group, transforming the honor into shame, and transforming the religion into the fundamental to kill. So the mafias are what I call identity-based criminalities. Mafioso is a person who pervert the values of people. The same in Colombia. Who is mafioso in Colombia? The Colombian people, I know very well Colombia. Ah, I forgot to tell you, I will die mayor of Palermo. Because I was appointed the mayor of Palermo in Colombia. <laughs> it's a city of 45,000 inhabitants. Wow. So, it's the second Palermo in the world. So, don't worry, when I will die, I will die mayor of Palermo, honorary <laughs> in Colombia. In Colombia, this, the most important value for Colombian people is splendid people for Colombia is justice. The paramilitars kill in the name of justice. The FARC kill in the name of justice. The narco trafficking kill in the name of justice. They are mafiosi because they pervert a value of the people. Just like Adolf Hitler, just like Osama bin Laden just like a, a mafia boss. So you can understand, I am speaking about an experience that probably can be useful all over the world. I know that you worked as consultant for many governments now, uh, and I hope that uh, you will be our consultant in solving our mafia issue in Kosovo very soon. You, your war. You, did, you, did you meet your the war Prime problem. Minister? Not only, not only mafia. I think that it should be interesting to promote the process of peace, may I tell you, between Serbia and Kosovo. I know that this is a really a very, very heavy issue. But I think that who will start will be the best. Do you know what I mean? I think it is also a matter of uh, mafia. Of course. I mean, we have this government, like you most probably know, 50% of us in last elections we voted of anti-corruption agenda in Kosovo. But in Serbia, in Albania, in surrounding countries, the situation is very bad. Like the connection between politicians and mafia are very visual, very vivid. In our country, we just elected the prime minister who everyone can say that he's not corrupt. So how can we have good relationships with 
Serbia when they are governed by politicians that are very linked with money. We are speaking about democracy. We need the people. <laughs> <laughs> we need, of course. We need the reaction of people. We need that the people know that uh, the future depends from their votes. The, the future of the country depends from their votes. Uh, therefore, I'm really, really impressed because uh, in Italy, just speaking about uh, our problems, not only about your problems, too many persons do not vote any longer. Mm. You can imagine what does it mean when the only 45% of voters vote. 45. It means that they are not against one party for another party. They are against the politics. It's a really, really a bad message. Uh, therefore, the problem in Italy is that the, the people do not go to vote. Uh, it is a really a problem of credibility, a problem of credibility. It does not depend from the from the from the from the from the president of the republic. We have a fantastic president of the republic. It doesn't depend from the government. We have a fantastic government, but it depends from the people. Uh, the people has to know that in democracy to vote is important. But I am one. Yes, one, 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 one can make a difference. We, we understood that. We did that. 50% of people of this country voted against corruption. Uh, and yeah, that is a great message, even to the world. Certainly. And Kosovo still remains the most isolated country. I will tell you, uh, a story of mine. So, so the, try, try to come inside the European Union as soon as possible. Yes, I will <laughs> tell you a story uh, with the Italian embassy. So I found out that in Perugia there is this Università per Stranieri. Yes, of course. And I wanted to learn the Italian language. Oh, si. So I wanted to go from 1st to 26 August. Eh. And I applied for visa in the embassy of Italy. And that happened on 6th of June. Uh, just now? Yeah, just now. It was uh, on 21st of July, they gave me the response, 45 days later, to tell me that my appointment to get interviewed for the visa is on 3rd of August. But I cannot go at that time because I have to be in Perugia on 1st of August. And I have sent a letter to the ambassador saying that exactly. it is a matter of dignity and integrity. You cannot treat people like that without informing them. They could have informed me day after that that is not possible. Yes. I had to wait 45 days to, to, know, that to know that I cannot go. And uh, you gave me the Charter of Palermo and the motto of it is like mobility is right. That's right. This society with 75% of population with, with less than 35 years old is the most isolated <laughs> country in Europe, paradoxically. You know, you know why, you know my proposal. My proposal is to abolish visa. My proposal is to abolish residence permit. My proposal is to recognize that everybody can decide to live, to die in a different place. I cannot be condemned to live, to die or to be killed in the country where my father and my mother decide to let me be born. Because uh, it's a human right to decide where to live. You had a fight with central government about this. Yes, I, f I was in fight. And the Minister of Interiors, who just at that time was Mr. Salvini, said, I will send the army to stop Orlando. Really? After three years, the army did not arrive. <laughs> but the day after, 2,000 young people, 2,000 young people, organized the flash mob in front of City Hall saying we are with the mayor against the Minister of Interiors. And uh, after one year and a half, the Constitutional Court said that I was right. Because the, the law was illegal. Sometimes the, the law, law are illegal. Be illegal. Exactly. But I know Constitution. I read some article of Constitution. <laughs> so I knew that that law was legal and I did not obey. I was against. I signed against the law. 
ordering to the employee. Employee said, oh, we don't sign, Mr. Mayor. Don't worry, I sign instead of you. They, pro they proposed, it's not possible to give what the, I did. I gave the anagraphic residence to the migrants. What does it mean? That you are no longer invisible. Because if you are an anagraphic residence, you can have a contract and work not in black. Mm. You have an anagraphic residence, you, are, you can rent an apartment and not in black. You have a, a, an anagraphic residence that is the competence of the mayor, you can have, have a contract of work, you can have the residence permit. So, playing my role, I let everybody to be visible. Because if in a community, Somebody is invisible, it's dangerous. It is dangerous, say, mafioso, fugitive, that is invisible. It's dangerous for him, for the others. It's dangerous, a honest guy without documents that cannot be visible, is dangerous for him and for the others. So, my proposal is to abolish the residence permit. I remember what was when I was student in Germany, every three months, and to go to, to the Italian consulate in Stuttgart, Stuttgart to get the stamp. Now, Schengen. I passed the borders, Germany, France, Spain. I don't know where I am. I don't know which state I am. And I hope that the European Union will be the future of the world, without borders, without borders. Waiting for that day, I give an graphic lesson to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Orlando, we have come to the end of this talk, but I would like to hear a message from you for people of Kosovo. Because when you speak, you're so inspiring. I am just amazed and mesmerized by, by whatever you told me here. So can you please give us a message? Because Last I think message that your is, please, is, is you have great. to auto-estimate yourself. You have to start for your richness. You are rich people, and in many cases, you don't use correctly the richness you have. Your first richness are human beings. You are a so young country, so rich of young people. You have natural richness, you have artistic richness, Please, you have just to, to see in the mirror how beautiful is Kosovo. And when you will be conscious to be so rich, you will discover the importance uh, to live in peace with other people. So my wish is just to pass from the war, from the conflict, from the intolerance, to the peace. That is, first of all, joy of life. Joy of life. Activist, professor, mayor, as you said, forever. Forever, forever. That's your honorary title. Thank you very much for being in our show, in our television, and thank you very much for being in Kosovo. Thanks a lot, Kosovo. and come in Palermo and see how wonderful is Palermo, and I will tell to Palermo, let's go to Pristina and see how wonderful is Pristina. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank